Welcome to the Mad Trio Podcast. This week we have the California Pariah, Jonathan Charney. We have James, the fat man, Stevens, Hello. and the man whose ex-girlfriend once described him as that soft, pillowy thing you sit on when you have hemorrhoids, Ryan Preston. I was definitely submissive in that relationship. <laughs> you were the skirt? I so, mean, you know, that's just... <laughs> I mean, if you look you good, right? On me. I, had to, I had to submit, you know. <laughs> So for those who love Costco, no more Polish dogs at Costco, which is a bummer because for a really yeah for a buck fifty you got a hot dog and a drink, which is honestly the best fucking deal ever. Yeah, but why not? Um, from what I read, they were talking about hey, we're gonna have healthy choices like salad. That's and, and stupid and bullshit. Like like that's what my first thought was. Yeah, th- that's the reason why I'm eating at Costco is fucking salad. No, yeah. it's because I'm eating a hot dog that's been in there for two and a half weeks. And it's not because I can go in there and buy five gallons of mayonnaise or that twelve gallon drum they they yeah. have of of ranch dressing. Yeah, no shit. I mean, like really? I mean. <laughs> Wait, so I, I think I might have missed the first part. Are they not selling hot dogs anymore? No. No more Polish dogs. Wow. See, yeah. I could get having both. You know, like, I, I get going after both markets, but... but Yeah, so just the, to throw the, one market away for freaking salad nuts? The Polish hot dog has been removed from the lineup to make room for healthier options, including acacia fruit bowls, organic burgers, and a plant-based protein salad. That is not going to go well. Just putting that out there. I mean, oh, that it is not going to where you put them. It's not going to no, fly. No, no offense to people out there, but Walmart and Costco kind of have the same demographic, and well, you know, I, I would put it this way. Yeah, that's way, the though. thing is, I doubt they're going to stop selling hot dogs in you know fucking Park Bench, Illinois. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I, mean, know, I can like understand that's be some some L.A. San Francisco, yeah. Chicago, you know, big cities Berkeley, where, where Davis, that, that kind of population is into know. it. I mean, the ones where they actually go out and eat freaking lawn trimmings, trimmings and shit. I mean, come on. I, I mean, look, I have no problem with shit. people, you know, with a, with a, with a plant-based diet, you know what no. I mean, or anything like oh. that. But, you know, I, 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 I choose not to get my protein that way. That's just for me. Hey, sure. You know, I just... I don't know. The problem is it's it's fast food. I mean, the reason why you eat there is you're with your kids or you're starving because... Or, or something... And a hot dog is a quick meal. Salad and other shit? You know, no offense, a hot dog's fast and easy to eat. So it's fucking pizza. Give me a fruit bowl or a salad I mean, or something. look, it's, 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 you know, not about that. I mean, obviously it's about, you know, some people have that particular diet restrictions and some, you know, uh, diets are becoming a little more prevalent. Who's fucking eating at Costco and has a food, you know? I mean, I know there's got to be a couple, but Dude, I listen, doubt they, it. They, Costco understands that people are shopping there for like four hours. They're not you know, fucking and then you're here. getting a lot of just the, 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 hey, I'm hungry when I'm leaving this place kind of market. Or, yeah. you know, not to mention, Costco's always been known for pretty good quality shit. So but people nobody's, just tend to like the food, like they have good pizza. But very few people yeah. are, are talking about the amazing Polish dogs at Costco. Oh, did you try those Kirkland brand hot dogs? Like they are the fucking meatballs at Ikea. I know people who go there just for the fucking meatballs. <laughs> Never mind the furniture that has 12 dozen pieces left over when you assemble the motherfucking thing. Yeah. Okay, so maybe maybe this is me being the uninitiated. And I've never actually walked inside of an IKEA. They serve meatballs. Yes, yes. I haven't eaten they there have either. Swedish meatballs. But, yeah, I know they have Swedish they meatballs. Have Swedish I just... meatballs at IKEA. Yeah. yeah. And since the and they got some other shit too. And I've since heard. I almost died because of a meatball, I've is never it, tried them. Never. Is will. it like a restaurant, or are we talking no, like, they, like they just ha- hey, complimentary meatballs when no, you no, walk the, in the door? There's it's it's like a fast food restaurant. There's tables and shit and. Yeah. You're fucking kidding me. No, it's Kia. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I heard a lot of people like going to IKEA for they'd go there like to go get lunch and shit like that. I never did it, but you know, I knew That's people the that weirdest thing. I wouldn't I thought I've the same thing too. It's like going to IKEA for lunch. Yeah. I mean, Wait, I correct me if I'm wrong, are Swedish meatballs the ones like covered in gravy? Yeah. I have no idea. Okay. No, that he's right. Yeah. No, I'm legitimately scared of meatballs, so they They're like, literally killed almost killed me. They're the ones that, you know... Why did like, a meatball almost kill you? I got food poisoning so bad I was in the hospital for six days. Wasn't eat, allowed to eat for three of those days. And you and you blame that on meatballs themselves oh, yeah. or meat? All meatballs. Well, let's just say it was because of the meat, but because the shape happened to be round, I'm a little hesitant to eat it. Meatballs that I didn't make. But, yeah. Okay, I'm just saying, you know, you, you probably got about the same shot of, of, you know, any other ground beef sort of product. 
you, yeah, I got food poisoning fall, from so. In and Out, and I still eat there. But you know, that's yeah, but, me. La- but you were sent to the hospital because of it. No, I just don't go to the hospital. <laughs> that explains the dent in your head. Yeah. Although I was. Uh, that explains uh, a lot of things. Yeah, I don't go to the hospital. I, I really choose not to do that. And you know, my, my policy is not going to the hospital for broken fingers or toes. Well, because you, you're there all the time. Like, you really want to visit there more than once a day. He doesn't go to the hospital. He goes well, no, houses. I mean, I look, I wouldn't go to the hospital for most shit, but I'm saying if I get shot, I'd probably walk in. But if I break a finger, you know what I mean? I know they're just going to splint it. I can do that here at home. <laughs> I can fix it with a hammer. Unless it's a super bad break for something like that, yeah. Just give me a hammer and a well, nail. I'll fix your finger. Pay is two dollars. You know, then I'll go there for a hangnail. Well, I was gonna say, what was that? Uh, I forgot. Does it shoot him up? The guy broke his fingers. Uh, he had his oh, yeah, fingers yeah, broken yeah. horizontally. Yeah. Um, you know, unless it's something like that, where you're actually probably gonna need possibly some surgery to reset it back. Well, another one where some dude. Well, yeah. I mean, obviously, if I need a, if I need to set the bone, if I have a compound fracture, <coughs> I might I might think differently. <coughs> Oh, yeah, but, I might go for oh, a compound fracture. Oh, by the way, you know what the, the funnest thing is to wake up in the morning is uh, is waking up to having your two-year-old beat on your head like it's a maraca. Yeah. that's. I woke up the other day and my son was going, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Welcome to parenthood. Just wait till they start shitting everywhere. He's two years and, old. And I mean, does. not in a diaper. Like I said, he's two years old. Yeah, just wait till they're older and they shit. It just gets worse as they get older. As I, as I understand, they just like run around the house and sort of shit behind them like a horse. <laughs> that that explains a, a, a lot. I was about thinking James. of like a crop duster, you know, like kind of sprays as it goes, you know. Like that's there you go. That explains a lot. You walk into James's house, his mom just automatically starts complaining at him. So I figured, ah, uh-huh, it's not the Jewish thing; it's you. No, it's called you know mental disease. <laughs> right. Go ahead. Blame the fact you drive your poor mom nuts. No, she did that on her own. I mean, isn't that why uh, Ryan's parents moved to Arizona? <laughs> Need to some distance. That's probably <laughs> true, actually. <laughs> so, did you hear that a guy went into the United States Postal Office and decided to fill out a change of address form, but decided instead of putting his actual name to change the UPS service headquarters address to his what happened <laughs> did they pay attention to it well they found out i think it was like two months later <laughs> so no they didn't catch it right away um that's funny, let's actually so. see i'm trying to see where it actually said because i know it said it was like two months later and that the mail was so bad that the actual postal guy was leaving box crates of mail outside the guy's door, and it was uh, <laughs> people's information. It was checks so to they, UPS. So, so what really happened is there's not something that flags in the, the United States Postal Service says that oh, this person does this. <laughs> that's, oh, that's for great. nearly three months, he was receiving all mail addressed to the UPS corporate headquarters. <laughs> And I, bet wow. the, I bet the mailroom guy's like, what the fuck am I doing? I've got nothing to do. Uh, he deposited the checks in his bank account. <laughs> Somewhere around 10 checks were deposited of around $58,000. Oh, that's hilarious. And it went until January 16th of this year. <laughs> and then they finally flagged it. And the investigators, um, what they noticed was, where is it? What he did, I'm trying to remember exactly it was that they actually saw. Um, let's back up here. What they found was that they weren't actually sure where who actually did it, but he left his initials. There we go. Um, at the first, the initials HS were written on the signature line, but the initials were then scratched out and replaced with UPS. And then uh, that was a, apparently good enough for the United States Post Office. Well, I'm trying to figure out why he didn't just scratch out, just get a grab a new sheet of paper. It's not like they don't have, you know. You know, you I think it was, it. Ju- I guess it was just spur of the moment. You know, I mean, <laughs> if you write your initials first and you're kind of like, oh, wait, no, I can't put my name on that. I'm and just surprised. It, it out. I'm just surprised it worked because there has to be some. It worked for three months. I'm just surprised because there's not some poor person in a cubicle manually changing it. But. <laughs> 
I'm just surprised it didn't flag. That's hilarious. I wonder if you could do that with like the FBI. You know, mail. I was kind of thinking the same thing. <laughs> Brian, if you well, start well, getting I mean, a lot of mail to your house. Well, you know, when the when the people aren't receiving their mail also, isn't that kind of like a, hey, what's going on? You know, I think that probably was it, but you know, because it's the mailroom guy going, um, "Hey, boss, there's no mail." Well, they'll come. It's been for, three weeks, but for three months this went on. <laughs> That's the amazing thing to me is that it kept going for three months, and the postal inspectors didn't actually show up at the guy's door until January 25th. I, I so it stopped on the 16th. So if he was there a holiday I missed there somewhere. So the question: If he didn't actually cash the checks, would he have gotten in trouble for it? Probably because it was under his handwriting. Well, why? I mean, because it, would, would it be malicious intent? I mean, what? how exactly would you get in trouble? Or would it just be the ultimate troll? Because that's what I was thinking. Until James said, oh, he uh, he cashed checks, I was thinking, what would yeah, you charge right. him with? I don't, I don't know. Um, well, um, what they're saying is that he had been previously charged for one kind of misdemeanor bank fraud for possessing stolen checks but um yeah i mean the the amazing <clears throat> thing is that they actually say that um that they that the mail the guy delivering the mail dropped it off at his apartment literally leaving a tub outside his door and then a few times the carrier said that he actually handed it to the guy through the door. I'm just thinking, like, what kind of postal service guy looks at it and it, sa it says, you know, UPS, the address, because it gets forwarded. It still has the actual address on it. Didn't think it was weird that he was handing this guy the mail to... You know, get the investigators to get in there. I, I'm just amazed by. It. I, I'm just am more impressed by the simplicity of it. You know, you're totally right. That the, I mean, the, the guy wouldn't ask all of a sudden his mail volume, you know, quadruples in an order of magnitude, trying to figure out. Okay, how? Why is this guy getting double the mail, and he's like this address has ever gotten? And doesn't actually say like how many of the checks actually went through. I mean, it's just you know, um, they just kind of noticed that the subsequent the bank. Notice that the transactions were, you know, going, getting higher in the depositing, and that's why they flagged it again. <clears throat> and so it looks like he's going to be, you know, going for mail fraud, which is a felony. Well, he's got and a then couple also, of you know, at least like thing. ten checks. So he's got a previous thing for mail checks. And if he's in California, fraud. if it's California, if one of those checks is over over a thousand dollars, it's a felony. If it's eight hundred, well, I, I think, think he's it is. in. I think he's in Illinois, but either way, it's you know. <clears throat> So, another interesting thing that's come up within oh, the last couple of weeks uh, is Elon Musk's mini submarine. Now he's either <laughs> he's either Lex Luthor or Tony Stark in in this because because people are comparing him to both. So apparently there was this these Taiwanese uh, soccer kids who were like so thirteen of them, twelve of them were stuck in an underwater were stuck in a cave. Somehow water flooded it. Elon Musk within like ten hours designed a kid-sized submarine that was designed to actually work its way through the the tunnel system. Apparently, you throw, you throw a kid in there, then, you know, you do it again. Yeah. I, the more and, and the, the more I, I hear about Elon Musk, the more I like him. Um, just because not only is you this... You like the billionaire villains? I, I think he's I a mean, little... I mean, you did I, compare to Lex <clears throat> Luthor. I think he's like both. Like, he's a troll too he's on Batman. Twitter. Um, no, I think he's like... Part Tony Stark, part, you know. Part Lex Luthor? Exactly. Because mm -hmm. here's the thing. Uh, Wired came up well, with an look, article. Well, look, I think Lex Luthor was, uh, was a... Wait, wait, hold on. Just just one second. Ryan, are you there? Yeah. Can you hear me? So, yeah. Who is this? So there's a... Elon... So Wired came out with an article. says Elon Musk really doesn't like mass transit system. He's trying to... And it's an article. And this is uh, Elon Musk's... <laughs> Elon Musk's actual response on Twitter. Twitter. Twitter? Twitter. He's mispronouncing everything, and I just call yeah. it a bunch of twits. This, de this article is depressingly misleading and misanthropic. Article came from a very brief dig digression at an AI conference, not from an interview. He's basically fighting and arguing people who write articles about him that are negative. I love this dude. He's the richest troll on the planet Earth. <laughs> 
at this point. Is Laura jealous yet? Well, I mean, he's, I, he's, he's, he fucks with people. It's his, hilarious. Uh, I think he, yeah, I mean, well, you know, what are you, you going to do? The guy, the guy definitely has enough free time to, to get into all these different types of businesses. He's making many flamethrowers for crying out loud. I know, I which, saw those. Which, so, by the way, was yeah, California State legal? Scientist. Yep. Well, yeah, I know. Well, I mean, it's not a very effective flamethrower. No, I don't care. But, I actually was pissed. I'd like your cigar. I was going to buy one until I realized I didn't have enough money to purchase it. Yeah, I kind of wanted to do uh, the same thing. But my point is, is, is uh, he, he definitely would probably be, you know, the, the, the Lex Luthor, I think, if, uh, if, if aliens invaded but until, you know, aliens invade or we have one alien who's really powerful. See, Lex Luthor was always misunderstood. You know what I mean? He, he might have been kind of a shitty businessman or, or you know, maybe a bit shady, maybe did some, some backdoor dealings and things like that. I have no idea. As far as I know, he was a real estate guy, you know. But then this alien comes over and he's naturally a bit concerned about what it means for humanity. You know, does this make him inherently evil? Not necessarily. So, so he's you really, know? he's the, the South African Tony Luther then. <laughs> just because I really do because um, cause the, the dude the, the dude's amusing as hell he has so much money at this point he has he has more than fuck you money he's like fuck you I'm gonna buy everything you own and then throw it in the trash can and then you know pay your mom to do something with the guy next door I mean the, the, he's amusing as hell alrighty uh, John's getting a little sadistic these days. Well, no, because you, you yeah, think yeah. You, you think about it. We, the guy, I guess we know what he's going to do with a lot of money. I know. Honestly, if if I if I ever have a lot of money, I'm buying a like uh, I don't know 500 mile acres in Montana, and just nobody's ever going to see me again. I'm going to have a giant <laughs> satellite dish for internet, and then I'm just going to fucking disappear. So you're just going to go for being the yeah. Image? I'm 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 kind of I'm kind of with kind you on that. Actually. I dig the idea of middle, moving to the middle of nowhere with just the world's most bitchin' internet connection and just, like, have, like, a horse or something, you know? You know and, and I'll have a guy, I'll have a helicopter, you know, and I'll have a guy just, you know, I'll pay a guy just to sit there in a helicopter all day long. No, thank you, Jeeves. I'll be back. I was watching uh, one show, and I think it was, like, one of the gun shows or something, and they flew out to this guy's ranch out it, in the middle of nowhere. It was probably American Guns. It, it, it might have been, and they... Flew him in in a <coughs> helicopter and all this shit. And the guy, American guns. Like, basically walks out onto his wraparound porch and tells the guys that his bitching gun safe for one that they can try the guns long distance shooting off his porch. And he had a full on clear area you could see for miles. And they were doing long distance shooting. I'm like, that's kind of the place I want. Yeah, see, I just want five hundred. Right. I want five hundred acres in Montana. You know, I, I, I don't really care about anything else. I just want a bitching internet connection, enough money to leave. You know, leave enough, leave be left alone. Maybe give a, uh, like sharecroppers to somebody who wants to use a hundred acres for something. Here, have this corner. Just leave me the fuck alone. You know, all I really want is the ability to have a bitching gun safe in an arsenal that makes Carlos Letter, if you guys even know who that is, jealous of my arsenal. That dude had a tank. <laughs> I mean, if you guys don't know who that guy is, go look him up. And oh. speaking of which, I wanted to bring up this. Um, have you guys taken the time to watch the Netflix show Drug Lords? Uh, Brian? No. No. So they released season two. Um, and I'm sure you guys know El Chapo, the sure. drug cartel guy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is this the drama? A, well, it's or basically it the, them telling the stories. It's not the the narcos. Okay, it's not narcos. So it's, it's an actual. It's a documentary. Yeah, then. it's a okay. documentary about different drug lords all over the world. I haven't seen that one then. Anyways, um, they brought up El Chapo, and I knew quite a bit about him, and I knew there was a shootout at one of the things between uh, his bodyguards and the Colombian Marines. But they actually had video that they played in the documentary series of it, and. I could not believe the amount of automatic gunfire that they played in the video. Why? Because it was literally you're watching something like Halo. <laughs> like, I mean, I was impressed that these guys were going room to room, literally full auto, 
firing back and forth where four guards were sh- killed and one Marine was wounded in the arm. My first question and they is... they were literally throwing grenades, smoke bombs. How bad <laughs> How bad were the shot? With the pe- were they? If they're, you know, you got a whole flock of people with automatic weapons. Well, I mean, if you're going room to room and it's literally a house, that's what it was. A little house in Colombia. I mean, you've seen those places. They're not very... You know, open and spacious. They're tight quarters, and you're doing full auto through walls and ducking. And my favorite thing about all those guys is the amount of cash they have on, and their biggest concern is rats. Yeah. Uh, So, did you guys see or hear about Travis Pastrana jumping Caesar the 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 fountain in Caesar's Palace? No. It happened. Yeah, I was actually watching a couple of. Yesterday, where he was where he was uh, jumping some cars and some buses, I guess, in in a tribute to evil and evil. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, a friend of mine uh, mentioned it on Facebook. I'm like, what? I didn't hear about this because I, I, I like Travis Pastrana. He's like my yeah. favorite crazy guy to watch. And he jumped over the, the, the Caesar's Palace uh, fountain. And I'm thinking, this has got to be the tamest thing this guy's ever done. Basically, he just has to jump. Yeah, I mean, did he do like a double front no, flip on it, it or was, some shit? It was literally I mean, that's just what a, I expect from from Travis Pastrana. Let's let's see if I can kill myself. I, I thought he was going to do a knack knack or some sort of effect. No, he just stayed on the motorcycle, boom, jumped over it. So I was like, uh, I bet everybody watching go, was going, "Wow, that's amazing!" But no, it was I kinda mean, for tame. Like, Travis Pastrana, <laughs> that's actually like the. I mean, he was doing that at like two. Before he could walk, I was. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah. Shit. It, it's pretty amazing to watch him do it. Yeah, but there's, I have to there's people in the uh, like anybody under thirty in that audience was sitting there thinking like, you better do a triple backflip. <laughs> but yeah. the, the one thing he did do, he he, he rode a, he rode like a like a big Harley. It was not a dirt bike. I would think it was an Indian, wasn't it? It might have been like an Indian. It was it was definitely. Shit, it could have been like a, like a Triumph or something like that. It was definitely beefed up, but it was a big heavy bike. Can we get him to, because to evil jump u- the Springfield Gorge on a skateboard? Because Evil used a, uh, a yeah. Harley, which was fucking crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, obviously the heavier it is, the harder it is to, to, to catch that angle and not, not yeah, end that shit when you when you. But, land. I mean, he was working with what they had at the time, you know. I mean, everything was a tank back then. Oh, I, yeah. I just think it's funny sure. because the, no matter what he does... If it doesn't have a flip involved or something crazy, it's it's like super anticlimactic. Like people my parents' age, oh, that's amazing. People twenty going, eh, he didn't he, do a barrel roll three sixty flip. Yeah, what was that? <laughs> you know, I mean, come he, on, <laughs> he's not crashing. I mean, what are you making this time? I mean, <laughs> so it's like the dude totally set himself up to fail no matter what he does. If it's not, I crazy. mean, well, I remember watching the the X Games where he where he did the first flip on the bike and was, he did the first double back flip. Yeah, but he was allowed to keep doing it after there was no points corrected. Yeah. So there was, like, no points in it for him. He just wanted to do it, and all of X Games said, do it. Because <laughs> so. I th- think, and yeah. I could be wrong, I think Kerry Hart was the second person to do it. I think there was yeah. another person who did it before him. Yeah. But he was the first person to do the double backflip, and I think somebody did a front flip, which on a motorcycle is not. Yeah, I somebody think he did was the, front the first flip one to do a front flip also. That's yeah, well, Travis, Travis Pastrana did the front flip, too, but it was after somebody had already done it. Um, yeah, but it's like the same thing like Tony Hawk doing the 360. That was, uh, was it 900? Yeah, well, he did the 360, and then he did the 900. And the 900, he almost did like Pastrana, where it was like no points, and he just had... Well, yeah, he kept doing it to trying. do it, if I remember the story yeah. correctly. Yeah. I don't know. I, yeah, it's kind of surprising that... I, just I guess, you know, if it's just a tribute to, to Evil Knievel, Knievel, it's not really... You know, needs to be something well, spectacular. Well, no, evil, I mean, it was evil spectacular never actually. Time. He didn't come. He didn't actually know, do it. But I'm just saying it's a tribute to him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It didn't need to be. You know, blowing but, him out of the water. Let me let me show that evil can evil sucks compared to me type thing. You know, I I, I do. I am wondering if uh, they beefed up the suspension because if it was like just a standard motorcycle, I bet that landing hurt like hell. Dude, I almost guarantee it was his own bike. Well, I bet it was his. I mean, yeah, I mean, honestly, well, if you looked at it, it was pretty badass. Had a white tank. I think it had the Indian logo and uh, gold leafing. If he didn't own it, I'd buy it if I was him because it's a pretty badass looking bike. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I agree with you though. I mean, you kind of um, expect him to do something. Yeah, but I mean, he so, is um... he is tame these days. I mean, consider what? as far as rally car goes. I mean, he's still tame. Well, at this point, he's more metal is than man. Is he still man. doing rally car? I think he's been doing the 
Ryan, do you know what he's doing? I think he's been doing the Nitro Circus show a lot. I don't think he does rally racing at the moment. What? Do you know? No, he still does rallies. Oh, does he? Because oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's been racing since. 2010, 2011. Yeah, I remember switching over to doing rally car, and, and like John said, he was doing stuff for Nitro Circus. Which and he was is doing pretty NAS- cool show. I think he was doing NASCAR, but I think he just got too bored of it. I could plus not see him he, enjoying NASCAR. Plus the fact, if I remember correctly, his contract actually stated he can't touch a motorcycle, and I don't see Travis Pastrana being not being able to touch a motorcycle no. for any certain period of time. No. It's just him. I mean, I understand that as far as, you know, insurance legal purposes to try to get the guy not to touch a motorcycle, but, you know. Well, yeah, well, that... I and, mean, I don't see him ever agreeing to well, that. Well, that and one, you know, one crash, even if even if it's a bruised arm, you're not going to race. There's too much of a risk that you're going to hurt, you hurt yourself, especially the man who's held together with, with so much metal. They, I uh, wonder who's broken more, him or Jackie? He broke his uh, he broke something on his shoulder or something like that, and he had a metal plate put in, and he did something and broke it again. They actually having to start they're they're beefing up medical stuff for him because he keeps damaging it. It's actually pretty you amazing. You mean they got welders in there now? <laughs> they brought it, welders into the emergency yeah <laughs> the he, surgery room. He, he bent some sort of titanium bracket, so they designed it beefier so it couldn't be broken as easy. Damn, that's actually talented. So Ryan, do you have anything? You know what? I was actually uh, just coming across some information not that long ago. Apparently, this had been kind of rumored for a little bit, but I haven't really been paying too much attention to the to the you know new movies coming out the next couple of years kind of stuff. But um, you know, they were making a uh, a Joker origins movie. Yes. You know who's directing it? No. How Todd I... Phillips. Todd Phillips. So which? Okay. I'm I'm curious on how they're gonna do this. You mean um, which Joker you know who's origin? Joker? Well, yeah, I mean because there's kind of very there, there's there's varied origins. How are they gonna play it? Is it gonna be the Jack well, Nicholson the thing, Joker? Is, is it gonna be the Heath Ledger oh, style? Oh, come on, they're not gonna. They're not Jack Jack Nicholson and the. Um, but uh, there's a couple of comics that have that definitely broached the subject. I think uh, uh, the, the Red Hood was one of them. Um, well, hold on, let, let me rephrase Killing it. Killing Joke uh, ventured a guest to it. But they're going with Joaquin Phoenix. Hair lip? So are they going... Oh. Yeah. Sorry for those who just got triggered. Um, so are, are, are they doing the more gangster Joker or the more psychotic Joker? Because that's, that's pretty much the gamut between Jack Nicholson, who was the gangster, and Heath Ledger, who was just crazy. Joker. I'm definitely going to go with mob ties, but definitely way more twisted than, than Jack Nicholson. Okay, so it'll be like but the also card- Todd Phillips. So so who knows what the, the origin is going to be. Maybe they're going to go with the uh, the killing joke where he was like a comedian or something, you know? Because I was wondering, there, there was a I forgot what it's called. There was a Batman uh, movie that had like the origins of Batman. And Joker was in it, and explained how Joker was a a mobster for one of his girlfriends. Uh, was a mobster who was tied to his his girlfriend's dad, who was a mobster, and mm. explained the evolution of that way. So I was kind of wondering if it was going to be towards that one. That one. Well, it's probably going to be something entirely new. You know, I hope so. But or at least a probably DC approved if it if it's going to tie in anyway with the uh, any of the Justice League stuff. Do you, so you think they're still doing that? Well, they're definitely going to have to do a Justice League too because they already tipped off the um, the uh, what do you call it the the dark side uh, payoff. Oh yeah, yeah. But there's I'd be interested because I know it's still not doing good. I mean, I don't see them giving up on it, but it, it still hasn't. I don't know. I I hope they do it, but it, it still hasn't done well enough that I I think really would allow it to have a sequel. Well, there's too opinion. many fundamental changes that they make that pissed off too many fans that, that was going to be their sort of core audience, you know? And I don't think it dragged in enough of the the off-the-street passive fans to, to really sustain itself. But I think they would do one more just for the for the payoff. I hope so. Oh, and the the Batman movie I was talking about was Batman Mask of the Phantasm. It was made in 1993. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was actually a yeah. Um, and it's, yeah, that's right. And it's my I like favorite. That, one. that was the first feature animation. It was movie. ever in the movie theater. What? I, yeah, I the, the, well, the, yeah, the first big animation movie that was ever in the theater. That was that was the one. 
that was right on the heels of the uh, the, the animated series from yeah. what ninety five. This one was made in ninety three. Well, the animated series was still going. Oh, so yeah. Maybe it was like ninety one or something so like that. So, what do you mean way. the first big? When the hell did the animated series start? I think it was 90. 90, 91. So, what do you mean the first big animation that that, that was in theaters? Because I'm Super pretty Heroes. sure that was the first like like big animated movie that was in a in a theater. Yeah, wouldn't that be like uh, Snow White? Because Snow White. I mean, was... shit. I don't know. It was the first thing to do something. Let me look it up before I talk out of my ass. Uh, animated series had a run run from 1992 to 95 because i'd be curious because if that was the case because i know disney had a bunch of shit come out in the 50s and 60s that i, I would have thought would have held that crown yeah i mean which definitely makes sense that it would have been in the in the, in the theaters let me let me look up what, <coughs> uh, what i'm talking about here so this is the only comic book film nominated for an annie award for best animated feature <coughs> it lost to the lion king in 94 um. By the way, this is great podcasting, but everybody's trying to hurry up and find what he's talking about. No, I was looking at different well, stuff. Well, oh, no, no, move, move along. Matter of fact, I, I earlier I was watching, um, you guys ever seen the, uh, the Penn and Teller Fool Us comes on CW? You told me about it, I haven't watched it Is it, it still on? I've, I've watched yeah, a bunch I never, of Yeah, I never freaking turn on CW because most of their shit sucks ass. Agreed. But, um, no, there's one guy that you need to look up. You need to look up the, um, um, the, the this one particular dude who was just on like last night's episode uh, is a guy named Ryan Hayashi H A Y A S H I okay um, yeah look this dude up he did a trick on that show uh, and he's got a YouTube clip where he's actually doing it at another place but I really 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 recommend looking up the one on the show um, it might be the best coin magic I've ever seen in my life. This shit was amazing. Did he pull it out of Penn's ear? I mean, basically. <laughs> and so uh, another interesting thing coming out sometime this year is The Rock's version of Towering Inferno is coming out. Um, I'm curious because The Rock hasn't had a lot of good run with movies lately. What? He was the best gay cowboy I've ever seen. Well, the last year, didn't he? Was it last year or the year before that that he had the that earthquake Journey movie? To the fin- oh, yeah. There was an earthquake uh, movie that bombed. Was that San Andreas? Yes, San Andreas. I know he did, uh, was it... <sighs> there was that Disney movie where he played was the Polynesian uh, guy. Journey to the Center of the Earth. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, know. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember. You're talking the... about uh, Maui. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Um, but he doesn't seem to have a good run of movies the lately that I remember. Yeah, I think he's an underutilized ass- actor. I, ha- I haven't <clears throat> seen Baywatch. I've heard good things about it. I haven't even though seen the movie it. bombed. I think part of it is I think he's stuck on kind of the same action roles. I would be curious to have him play a more serious role, or maybe a a more like or like a Boondock Saints style action movie where it's a serious action movie versus because everything I've seen him in lately is like a comedy based. I think that's all he does. I'd love to see him in something different because most of the movies I've seen well, him in lately have I mean, sucked. Scorpion King wasn't really comedy, but that was a really shitty movie to begin with. Though. I would consider the second one a comedy. But, I mean, I wouldn't. But the first one I think was a comedy too. I would well, have considered that. The, I mean, there really wasn't a lot of acting in Scorpion King, though, for him. No, I mean, because basically yeah. there was lending his name to a very bad CG likeness. Oh, you're talking about the one... Okay, so I, I take back everything version. I said about Mask of the Phantasm, uh, by the way. Wait, wait, hold on. What was that? Go on. Ryan? I, said, I take back everything I said about Mask of the Phantasm. I don't know where the hell I was getting oh. that. As soon as you said, like, Snow White, I'm thinking, like, of course. Why the fuck wouldn't that have been in... Because no, I'm sure I, that was out, I know what I remember, you mean, I thought though. I remember it being the first in something. What it were prob- you talking about, the Scorpion King? No, well, he was bringing up Dwayne Johnson doing another film. Because Dwayne Johnson hasn't had, it seems to me, even though he's made a lot of money, it doesn't seem like he's had a lot of movies that have become hits the last year yeah. or two. How two. fucking dare you speak an ill word? No, no, I'm not speaking ill of the, the next rock. President but of our United States. Name, name a movie of his that has done well in the box office because the. <laughs> uh, what was the one? Gave, be cool. Didn't you mind he just crush it? I don't know. I didn't see Jumanji. You know, that might have. Cause I, know I did. It was fucking cool. Huh. Jumanji okay. might have actually did it because I know there was the the two that James mentioned. It was the San Andreas bombed. Um, the 
oh, the fuck that David Hasselhoff TV Journey, show? Oh, Baywatch. Baywatch bombed. And Journey to the yeah, Center of the Earth. Yeah, made about a billion dollars. So okay, so he has but, one then. I'm, I'm, but he's had a couple that, that recently. And the Maui did really well, but that's a Disney movie. Disney movies were almost always well, do well. Well, John if it's Cena's an gonna do that too, though. Um, nah, he's see, doing Ferdinand. Yeah. See, the difference between John Cena and The Rock is The Rock actually has a lot of personality. John Cena just doesn't come across having a personality besides being kind of a dick. Yeah. Wasn't he in? Uh, was it Be Cool that he was in? Yeah. The we, yeah, yeah. The sequel to Get Shorty. Right? Yeah, Be Cool was the sequel to Get Shorty, and yes, Dwayne The Rock Johnson Dude. was in that. I think that might have been one of his first movies. Yeah, but that was an epic acting job. I mean, yeah, I, that was awesome. I, I mean, there's nothing. I got nothing bad to say about that. That was just awesome. And I mean, that to me, it's like I want to see more of that. And I think that's what they did. Like John was saying, is that he kind of got stuck in the comedy gig for a long time. Um, I mean, he did. Um, like I mentioned was the Scorpion King. John was thinking about it as the, the CGI one that they did in the mummy. The I forgot. Three. He, I forgot he did one that was actually the title of it. Yeah. The and Scorp- then there was that another was... one where he was like the main actor for Scorpion King. Yeah. And I mean, well, there was really movie. wasn't much acting to be done in that film. And the film actually sucked too. Well, that movie was, I, but, think, I think that movie was more like a B movie that way, just to see if he could act. Cause he was one of the best parts about but, the movie, but a, he just came off of doing wrestling, which but to me, that to... was the same thing that they kind of, did with Arnold in the beginning is here's mindless action. We're going to throw you in mindless action. I mean, how many Hercules did he do? And One Conan. But in I mean, his defense, on. Arnold was never a great actor. Well, I mean, they didn't let him speak in his first movie. Well, it's because you couldn't understand him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So the rock, I think just, they kind of took him as like, you're an Arnold Schwarzenegger slash Hulk Hogan. Here's, mindless stupid action film okay i actually have to call you on that one he was nowhere close to hulk hogan don't get me wrong that, I, but I mean huge... hulk hogan did shitty ass action movies for a and, while well, there's a difference is a being a huge hulk hogan mark I don't care. Uh, the rock far as ability to do promos had better timing i, I mean i'm that. a huge hulk hogan. hulk hogan as close as being a his heroes i have was one of my my wrestling heroes but i mean if but you... the rock the rock had amazing timing one of the reasons he was able all, to transition but if so you look well. at all wrestlers all wrestlers are trying to follow the hulk hogan transfer out of wrestling and acting which hulk hogan really didn't do a great job would, on it I but i mean i would say they're trying to follow rock honestly. name a really good hulk hogan movie after i really like suburban commando oh god but it's a bad movie i'm not surprised um, I mean, he owns a Dolph Lunger and Punisher. Come on. Hey, Dolphy, I want you to sign it. Um, <laughs> you know what? If you can get Dolph Lunger to sign it, I, I will take back almost everything I've said gonna, against the Punisher. I'm going to have to see if he has a Twitter account now. Um, I mean, I, I prefer Dark Angel. I come well, in peace. The, the Rock, but, you know. I mean, one of the things The Rock had for him was, A, he had a great sense of comedic timing. Timing, A, he had a good writer You who just like The Rock him. Strudel, don't you? Uh, but he had a great sense of timing, far as writing, uh, as far as what he did. And do you smell that? Do you? It's a bad joke. <laughs> um, so I just well, think I he, trans- he had a run on it for a very long I th- time. I think he just transitioned better than Hulk Hogan, because Hulk Hogan was definitely typecasted as being Hulk Hogan, because in the eighties, wrestling was the king of television. Yeah, but um, he, um, so yeah, it's sort- actually kind of making a comeback a little bit. Hulk Hogan? No wrestling. No, no wrestling in general. Well, one of the best things that's happened to wrestling now is the fact that there's there's more places. A, I don't think you get as much money as you will in the WWE, but there's a ton of indies. Um, J- Japanese wrestling is huge. Um, there's Ring oh, of shit. Honor. There's Lucha Underground. There's TNA. I think yeah, that they're still around. Yeah, I like around. Lucha Underground. The um, only thing that kind Billy of gets annoying Corgan, is the storyline. Billy Corgan of uh, Smashing Pumpkins bought the NWA a while ago. Hmm. Oh, um, a long time ago. Yeah, he's... He- like one of those white block bands. You know, so I was listening to an interview with uh, with John Cena maybe a couple of months oh, ago. And he, I mean, he comes across as the nicest guy on the planet. You know what I mean? He's just like a super genuine, nice dude who really loves, you know, wrestling and, you know, the, the sport of it all. And, uh, you know, it basically just said it like, like, look, it's, it's, it's like, 
it's like the same thing as watching like a superhero movie, except you're watching the sort of thing happen in, in real life. And, and it's supposed to be kind of cheesy. And, and when you explained it like that, I was like, okay, well, you know, well, obviously I'm still in the fucking Batman at 33. Well, no, that's what wrestling is. I mean, wrestling is, Dude, is don't is, talk shit about Batman. Wrestling is pretty much it's, I'm, it's, not, I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> wrestling at its base is a, uh, it's almost like an opera, you know, or, or a soap opera. Yeah. You have the good guys, the bad guys, the story of good and evil. I mean, the only thing that's really changed in wrestling is you have characters like Randy Orton, who I would say are more in the gray. There's the anti-hero now instead of being, you know, the face or the heel. Um, you know, um, I, I love I love wrestling. I mean, the one thing I think has gotten better over the years, and this is just biased because of my age, I think the ability to tell the story in the ring has gotten better yeah. because I think the audience just doesn't have the patience for long drawn out stories. Like they used to do one story a year in some wrestling companies and it would just be a long have you guys watched, build up. Uh, you, you guys watch glow yet? Yeah. It's and I was actually going to mention that is like, that's one of my favorite parts of, of glow is when the soap opera actress who's trying to <clears throat> turn into wrestling goes, Oh, it's right. a soap opera. I can do this. Yeah. I thought so, that was yeah, awesome. Yeah, I got that. Yeah. So there's a uh, there, there was a yeah, woman. The second season just came out. It's fucking great, dude. Yeah. So I, there's a woman by yeah. the name her, her WWE name was Ivory, if I remember correctly, and she was actually in Glow. Um, she's in an interview of Stone Cold Steve Austin's podcast, and she actually talks about like her experience as a real Glow wrestler. Um, check it if you can find that podcast. It, it's it's totally interesting from uh, from somebody who was there. Hmm. Also, that there's a couple other ones with Chavo Guerrero Jr., who was act. He's a WWE wrestler, or was Lucha Underground. He was actually talking about because I think he's one of the producers. He talks about his experience in that too, which is pretty badass. About actually training the girls to do it and how it's actually empowered them is is Wait. women oh, okay. to to, I gotcha. to to do it because you look at it. I mean, I don't want to wrestle. That shit looks like it hurts, and they're talking about it hurting, but how they miss it, and it's it's pretty cool to listen to. That sounds kind of cool to listen to. So, are any of you guys interested in the Tom Hardy Venom? You know, and it's Tom Hardy. What the Tom, Tom Hardy? He's in Venom, Venom in 28, uh, 2018. Oh, and IMDb. Oh, sorry, probably didn't say it clear enough. Um, <clears throat> it w it's considered an action horror sci fi according to IMDb, which has yeah, me no, I'm, really I'm excited. Into just about anything that fucking Tom Hardy does. Yeah, I like Tom Hardy too. I think uh, what was it, Lawless? I really liked that film. Fucking Lawless, that was really man. Good. Well, I'm really, um, I'm really excited. The fact that it, they actually have the horror element. I mean, it might actually be really good. Like that dude, most well, of Tom Hardy is an absolute fucking chameleon. That dude is a great character actor. I'm really hoping it's going to be good because I'll be honest, I haven't been thrilled with most of the Spider-Man movies. <laughs> oh well, nobody has. I mean, well, except Homecoming. Homecoming is fucking great. It's on the list of things to say, uh, see, but it's I have so little time at this point <laughs> that it's just like... Um, yeah, I've seen Homecoming. I did like it. Um, I, I don't know. I kind of like the, the skinnier guy. What was his name? Um, the the previous one? Is that the previous one, the skinny guy? The well, one that... There was the Garfield guy who was dating... Who was, uh, was oh, I think that's Andrew, Andrew Garfield. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I actually liked his kind of. Um, I like the I like the new guy, the kid, because he has the feel yeah. of Peter yeah, Parker. That's and what his, I was gonna say. Is I like that. And he talks too, a lot but, of shit. <laughs> but I mean, I kind of liked scene. it that they actually brought in that you know the 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 actual kind of formula thing of making the web shooters because I think every <clears throat> Spider Man should have web shooters. Everyone. You mean Spider-Man? Yeah. Yeah, for I mean sure. the, the freaking. Um, I agree. The Toby Toby yeah, McGuire's one. one. That was. Different. I have to. I have to admit. I appreciate kind of <coughs> trying to figure out a new spin, but you're missing a lot of gimmicks with removing his web shooters. Because oh, was that just a bad pun? Why a new spin? That was a bad pun. <laughs> yeah, probably. I mean, I'm just putting that um, out there. I, I because the the gimmick with running out of uh, the the spider, you know, the the web stuff. Added a, a little bit more depth to the character, other than, Psst, hey, I always got webs, you know. Yeah, I, I know. Well, and it didn't, it didn't have to be, you know, like, like, oh, he turned into a spider, like, <laughs> like full on, full blown. I mean, you know, it wasn't the worst thing in the world. I mean, like the way everybody made it sound. No, it wasn't. But, but uh, you, yeah, I don't, you know I don't what I mean. 
it, it, I mean, the web shooters was just part of the thing of like him, you know, landing in garbage cans yeah. or, you know, having to right. switch it out. So I am, I'm looking at IMDb and I find this fascinating. We got to wind this, this up in a bit. So this is IMDb's current top movies. I'm going to go through the, the 10. So from 10 to one, the top 10 right now, it's fight club and an 8.8 .8 reading. Wait, wait. What is the list again? This is IMDb's top, top rated, rated movies, movies right okay, now. Okay, okay. Right. Really? So number 10 is Fight Club and an 8.8 .8 rating. That surprises me considering how many people I know like it. The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly has an 8.9. Pulp Fiction with an 8.9. Here's the one that surprises me because everybody bitched about this movie. Lord of the Rings, the first one. Fellowship of the Ring for an 8.9. You know, that actually kind of turned around when it got released in a DVD and they started doing the extended edition. So, I mean, theater-wise, it, it was... Not made it, 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 it did really well. I, yeah, that's what I was going to say. It did really, really well, but it kind of got a lot more steam when they released the extended versions. Because some of it made a little bit more sense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Schindler's List, this one, in my opinion, should be higher up as number six in an 8.9. One that really surprised me, and it's one of my all-time favorite movies, was 12 Angry Men has an 8.9. Dark Knight hey. is a 9.0. Godfather, here's the one that's probably going to piss James off. Godfather Part 2 is a 9.0. Godfather is a 9.2. And the movie that made shit in the box office, number one. Can anybody guess it? It made it bombed at the box office. Taxi Driver. Shawshank. Bingo! Shawshank? A 9.3. You know, I, I'm not upset that Godfather 2 was rated higher because that's the interesting one. No, no, no. Godfather, that's number three. Godfather Part 2 is three. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I misheard you. No. Yeah. So you uh, really like, it, right? you, yeah, you like the I second one. I like the one second one. Than... Yeah, I like the second one above the other one because that's when, you know, they go to Italy mm -hmm. and they tell the backstory right. of him. Fuck yeah. Yeah, that's the good one. I mean, I, I would have been really pissed uh, pissed off if, oh, you know. Uh, excuse me, I did, uh, I messed up on the Lord of the Rings. It's Return of the King. Is number seven, not Fellowship of the Rings. Oh, we're doing the game, sure, sure. Right, either but way, yeah, I, I mean, mean you they... know, Shawshank. What is Shawshank at one? Yeah, Shawshank was number one. It was the top-rated movie. Yeah, I mean, it's that's that's one of those things. If you look up just like everybody's top ten list, that's one or two. Thanks to basic cable internal. It's, it's, internal you know, it's like Shawshank Redemption and fucking Citizen Kane, as far as everyone's concerned. You know. True. I, I wasn't more, really a big fan of Citizen Kane, honestly. At this point, how many people have seen it who are not film nuts? Okay. I've still uh, never seen Dr. Zhivago. <laughs> Good that will, I'm not surprised. Gil, Goodwill Hunting is number 101 at an 8.3. Really? That should be up more more because that is such an amazing movie. Uh, I, I'm kind of surprised Beautiful Mind's not even in there. Maybe it's top 20. I'll have to actually see. Yeah, because I mean that that to me is a really well acted film. I mean, everybody oh, yeah, in that film that the... is amazing. Same with Goodwill Hunting. Fucking terrific movie. I mean, Honestly, I'm not surprised um, I mean, that you, one not being really, as high. You don't usually hear me give Ben Affleck credit for acting. Holy but I mean, shit. for that one, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's really acting. What? Beautiful Mind is an 8.2 rating, so it's probably it's way back there. Hmm. I'm not surprised, though, that movie is as good as it is. Most of the movies in the top ten have a pretty good rewatchability factor. Yeah. Um, Beautiful Mind, as much as I like it, it's not a movie you could watch even once a year, I think, would be pushing it. I don't know. I could probably watch it once a year if I wanted to. I, don't I, think I just yeah, don't I really want to again. sit there and rewatch movies all the time. I mean, I like to watch different random shit all the time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so eight point two. I've been in a pretty nostalgic kick lately, watching a fucking bunch of old things that I've seen a bunch. So, how many times have you watched Giggly? Uh, just the once, luckily. Yeah. Yeah. Until his uh, until his uh, better half forces him. I cannot see. Well, I mean, I have seen her parents' movie collection, so no, she might do it just to torture him. <laughs> Uh, no, because she'd probably have For to the sit record, there I have seen movies that are that shitty more than once. True. <laughs> so how many how many weren't directed by people who do it on purpose? I still need to track down Mako Jaws of Death. If anybody has a copy of Mako Jaws of Death and you want to like either send it to me or give me a copy, I would be more than willing. So, ladies and gentlemen, for Jonathan Charney, <laughs> James Stevens, and Ryan, oh my God, Preston, thank you for listening. Goodbye.